Create art, look at art, enjoy your life. That's my motto. And actually, createlookenjoy.com is the URL of my website. I began taking pictures when I was a boy. Here's a self-portrait when I was in my teens, and here's one from a couple years ago. And I first began working for newspapers as a teenager in my summers, working for some small newspapers. And um, I just wanted to show you uh, sort of my evolution, that I start off as a photojournalist, and I continue to do photojournalism, um, but I also have uh, developed an abstract photographic vision and work as an artist as well. So in the mid-80s, after I graduated from Stanford University with a degree in international relations, I began working in Boston for some uh, freelancing for local magazines and newspapers. And I loved music. And at the time, in the mid-80s, in my mid-20s, I was covering a lot of the hip-hop and rap scene in the Boston area and I had a big chance to go down to New York City and photograph Run DMC just when they were starting to make it big on the national stage. Um, but I wanted to break out of just Boston area, break out to the national stage, so I took a trip to South Korea in 1986. And this is one of my favorite pictures. It's a South Korean elder, and uh, based on my studies of communication and intercultural communication at Stanford, I knew before I took a trip to a country foreign to me, I need to study some of the language study some of the history, the culture, the politics, so I'd be an informed photojournalist. And, uh, of course, I learned some Korean, and I saw this man, and I approached him, and I said, Shajinul Chikka Sunika, which is, as you might guess, can I take your picture? And he sort of pulled himself up with this prideful stance, and um, it was his way of saying yes. So um, I just really, it's one of my favorite pictures. Um, uh, one reason I went to Korea is that the, the opposition to the dictatorship was heating up and the Olympics were coming, so there was a lot of worldwide interest in the country. Uh, so these are some riot policemen. And with the pictures that I took on that trip in 86, I got into a photo agency that represented me to magazines like Time and Newsweek, and here's the New York Times magazine. And I began to be published in magazines around the world. Uh, this picture here was taken in the basement of the White House, right off of the war room. This is the National Security, where the National Security Council is, the Situation Room. Went back to Korea in '87 uh, with my, ha you know, wearing a gas mask and a helmet to cover uh, the riots and the social change. It, it was amazing. I witnessed history. I documented history as the government shifted from. Um, a dictatorship to a democratic government. Had a big coup during the campaign in 88 or after the campaign I had photographed uh, one of the candidates wives Kitty Dukakis during the campaign and after the campaign some of her struggles with alcohol and drugs came out and um, one of my pictures I was in the little airplane a little jet flying around with her as she was campaigning I was working for a Br British publication but I, I went to the Soviet Union when it was still the Soviet Union and documented the underground art scene and hippies and punks. Uh, this was, um, I did a story on a polygamist out in Utah with his, I don't know, 16 wives and 30 kids or whatever. There's his youngest wife. There's his oldest one. And this was published in Denmark. As I said, my work's been published around the world. This was a shot in Life magazine during the first Iraq war. Um, but I'd been doing that journalism, traveling around the world, having a lot of fun, risking my life. But then I met a woman, the love of my life, and uh, felt it was more important to be around home and, and start to think about building a family with her. So I, I got into doing uh, corporate work. This is a shot from an annual report. This uh, gross, disgusting medical waste processing facility but put some water on the floor. I've got all sort of sorts of lights going on here painted these railings yellow to make it look new and fresh, um, you know, did some work for banks and so on, um, but really uh, was about ready to get out of photography because, you know, I'm more of a daily shooter, like shooting all the time, and these were big, high-paying, high-stressful jobs that wasn't really my cup of tea. 
But it's just at that point an opportunity came up. Uh, some friends of mine worked at the Christian Science Monitor newspaper in Boston. And I started working for them and did so many different things. They have a page right here where I could shoot art photos. This is just drops of oil on a rainy pavement. Um, I did uh, photos for the kids page. Uh, this is Bush's second inauguration down in Washington. You know, I was able to do photo essays. This is a homeless shelter, an overflow homeless shelter. On the bottom here is a homeless man and his daughter in a park down in Providence. Um, and, you know, the shelters were so full that here's a man putting out his blanket on the floor of a church to uh, sleep. Now, after uh, working for several decades as a photojournalist, I decided it was time to share what I know. I got a job teaching at a photography school, Hallmark Institute of Photography, um, and I really began to experiment that as a photojournalist, I always had editors telling me what to photograph. So at first I wondered what I was going to photograph, and then it turned into, well, how am I going to photograph? So I experimented with blurs and, and really got into the art aspect of photography, and... Um, ended up getting with some agencies to represent this type of work that I was doing. So it was really nice to become an educator that I could really shoot and experiment and also do a lot of teaching and, and share what I know. Um, and out of this experimentation I came up with a series of images that I call reality-based abstraction. So it's multiple exposures. So I program my camera to take three pictures or four pictures at a time. So that's at an airport. This is some old farm machinery. So this is kind of the artistic, one of the artistic directions I've gone in. But I also continue to do photojournalistic work. I work for an agency called the Image Works. This was a recent um, protest up near where I live in Greenfield, Massachusetts of nurses uh, going on strike. Um, there's, there's the watermark over here so people don't steal the image off the web. Um, and then also I do some work as a photographer. This is a, a school that I did some work for recently. It's a, a girls school and uh, you know so in a sense I'm shooting in a photojournalistic style um, capturing moments, a natural feel to the picture um, but working for a school and not out uh, risking my life. So I have a lot going on and also my artistic images uh, go with this agency called Getty Images. It's the largest uh, online agency in the world uh, that represents my work and you know I get a monthly income from that agency. So keep in mind while you're working away uh, studying uh, my motto that idea of create art, look at art, enjoy your life, and uh, look forward to seeing the work that you create.